How's it going guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Z Garage. And if you remember last week, we had a lot of fitment issues with these manifolds. Um, so you can see this one, cut the flange off. Uh, this one, I'm halfway through cutting part of the flange off. Uh, so hopefully we can get these fit up this week. I would like to go ahead and start mocking up turbo and intake stuff. Um, so I don't know if you guys can see the engine behind me. I've got some spark plug wires just kind of laying there just to kind of see how they're fitting. Um, Actually, I've got some LS coil packs over there. Uh, so let's go ahead and just take a quick look at the engine. I've done a few things since the last video, um, obviously. So let's go ahead and catch you up to speed and see what's going on. All right, guys, so here is the engine. Um, some of the things I've done since the last video was start to put um, some of the timing components back on. Um, so I got uh, a new one of these rear plates here. Uh, you can buy pretty much all these parts new from Nissan still um, because this engine was in so many cars, they really stock a lot of the parts for it. Uh, so rear plate, I think you can get the gear, um, maybe not from Nissan, but I know that they exist online. Um, still OEM pieces, I just don't know if they're from Nissan directly. Um, and then I was going to go ahead and torque down these cams. Um, so the way that I do this is you rent this tool from AutoZone. Um, you go ahead and get the part number. It's that one right there, 6, 7, uh, 6, 4, 7, 8, 3, 5. Uh, looks like this. It is a universal timing gear holder. Um, and then I noticed that it likes to slip off the teeth a lot. So I go ahead and put just like a ratchet strap around it. Um, that really helps it hold the teeth on there. Um, and I'm able to go ahead and torque those down. So um, I got both these torques now, super easy um, with this method. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and probably just reassemble the timing belt. Um, but uh, some other notable things, I did pull off this uh, valve cover. And one thing that I noticed, if I can come over here for you guys, all right, one thing that I noticed on this valve cover is there's actually a baffle. You can see there's a little, I don't know if you guys can see it, there's a vent in that corner right there, and then a baffle up here for the entire rest of it. And that actually blocks the PCV system. Um, you, can, uh, you might not be able to see, there's some drains on the side and everything. Um, and it blocks the oil from going directly into the PCV, which is actually a really good idea. Uh, the issue is that um, if I wanna go ahead and re-drill this somewhere else, I cannot put a nut on the other side like I was planning because I can't reach it. There's a baffle in the way. So I'm gonna have to put a little more thought into how I want to route the PCV for this. Um, I was looking at other VG uh, 30 and 33 uh, valve covers. Um, and there are a few that look like they might work, um, but usually they have like one here and then one up here uh, for a breather. And I don't really like having two breathers. Um, I know you could block one off, but it's just kind of a pain. So I'm still undecided how I wanna do the PCV on this setup. But uh, we're gonna have to cut this off anyways, so uh, in order to run the intake manifold at least. So we will figure that out in a little bit of time here. Um, other notable things, I got all the coils onto the coil bracket. They look pretty cool. Um, one interesting thing about the way that this bracket is set up is that uh, one of these coils goes up and then one of these coils goes down, up, down, up, down, like that. Um, I don't know if I like that setup because it means I'm gonna have to have a wiring harness up on top and a wiring harness up on bottom and then uh, spark plugs going up and down and up and down. So I might go ahead and adjust it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the intake manifold on first um, and then see if I like the up, down, up, down configuration. Um, but I kind of was hoping that they would all be up um, and then I would route these wires back around the back up into it and then these ones would obviously just go straight into the top. So. We'll play with that as well. I might go ahead and end up um, making a new one of those. So I think that was pretty much all the progress that I made, um, just a lot of the timing stuff that I've done. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the timing here. I think that's the next step for me. Um, and then we'll go ahead and start working on fixing the intake um, and exhaust um, so we can go ahead and start routing some of those lines, um, coolant lines and air like boost vacuum pressure lines um, for the wastegate and everything. So uh, let me go ahead and finish that up and then we'll take it from there. All right, guys, so I've got the Blue Gates Racing timing belt on here. It looks really, really cool. Um, always double check the teeth count. It's 40 between cam mark and cam mark, and then 43 between the right cam and the crank. Um, I've checked that twice now. It looks really good. Checked the tension after I spun it over. That looks good as well. Um, so I'm happy with that. Um, I need to paint the timing covers still, so I can't put the rest of the timing stuff on yet, but I'm really excited. I want to show you guys this. Uh, this is a Ross Motorsports or Ross Performance harmonic balancer. And it just looks so, so cool. There's the part number uh, if you guys want to order this. I believe they're an Australian company. Uh, this does cost a pretty penny, but it is really nice. It's the only aftermarket uh, damper that I know of for the Z. And if you can see, it's got one road belt and two V belts. 
uh, this one being the water pump and uh, alternator, and then the other two being power steering and AC, which means that we're gonna be able to keep our V-belt power steering here, and we're going to be able to keep our AC uh, V-belt as well. So I'm super happy with that, guys. It's super cool. I've been holding on to this for like a year now, and uh, we are so close to being able to put it on the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint those covers. I think that I'll go ahead and do that right now. I gotta scuff them up, really clean them down, um, and then we can go ahead and put it back on here and then get the harmonic balancer on, and then the front of the engine will be pretty uh, tidied up, and I'm super happy about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on that, and uh, we'll see how it all looks. All right, guys, I just got done painting these timing covers, and I decided to go with a wrinkle black. Um, you might not be able to tell right now, but they're still pretty glossy. Um, apparently this takes quite a long time for it to actually wrinkle up. Um, two hours, they say, is when you should start seeing the wrinkles, and if you need to apply another coat at that time, you can. Um, and then it has to dry for like 24 to 48 hours, and then you have to bake it out in the oven, and that'll cure the wrinkles even more. I don't know, I gotta read the can again. Uh, but uh, these are looking really good, even if they don't come out super wrinkly. Um, I do like the black, that's what I was gonna originally do. Uh, so hopefully the wrinkle come through because I wanted to paint the valve covers wrinkle. I thought that would be pretty cool. Um, and having these match would be nice. So uh, we'll go ahead and move on from that. Uh, I was hoping to go ahead and be able to reassemble this here in the next day or so, but uh, apparently it kind of takes a long time to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead, jump over, finish hacksawing the uh, flange on the exhaust, um, and then we'll get it fitted up. We can get the turbo fitted up. I might need bolts for that actually. I need to figure out what bolts those are. Um, and then, yeah, we'll get it back on the engine and see if we can start routing some of our piping. All right, guys, we got the upper intake manifold on and it looks pretty dang good. Um, it looks like it's getting a little close to the valve cover right here, if you can see. Um, so when I get my flange in, I'll go ahead and see if uh, this is going to need to uh, be spaced. I'll probably just put a manifold spacer right there uh, to raise this up a little bit if I need. Um, I don't really think that does much for performance or anything, but. Uh, just in case this is getting too close. I'll see if I can angle it a little bit too. Um, I assume the original one, because it came out you know, another quarter inch or so, uh, didn't have any issues, uh, but because I had to cut mine off, obviously I do. But regardless, guys, the rest of this is looking really good. Um, I went ahead and because of the really short bolts kind of ripping out the first thread on these, um, I helicoiled them. Um, I just really like having helicoils in aluminum because I'm getting really tired of uh, cross thread and stripped threads on aluminum pieces. So helicoiled these, put new bolts in. Um, they're the correct length. Looks really, really good. You can see I've got my coil packs on the side here and I've routed my cables. Um, so this is going to be cylinder, um, actually I forget which one is one. I think that one is one. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, all the way down the line here, alternating coming through and going up. Uh, you can see these ones kind of go back a little bit because it's going to be in that plug, but it's gonna be pretty good. So I'm really happy with how this is routed. Looks really nice. Um, so I am super happy. I'm working on the exhaust manifold now. Um, you can see I've been cutting away at it for a long, long time. I'm almost through this side now. Um, so this side I did last night. This side here I'm working on right now. Um, so fingers crossed that that uh, doesn't take me too much longer. Um, I think this progress here I've took me like 10 to 15 minutes already. Um, so it, it is taking quite a long time to get through this. So um, I'm gonna go ahead, take that, and then we'll go ahead and stick it on the engine and it'll be really, really cool. So let's jump to that. All right, guys, the exhaust manifold is on um, to a certain extent. Uh, you might be able to see there's still a bit of a gap in the flex pipe right here. Um, the, just at the very end here, it's having a lot of force pushing the flex pipe up. Um, it's almost like the flex pipe it was designed with was a little bit shorter um, and also moved in a little bit. So I might go ahead and have to loosen the other side and see if I can get a little bit of play on both sides here um, and then have it all tightened up. We'll see how that goes. It's good enough for just uh, mocking things up right now. Um, so you can see we've got, it's tight, but we should have room here for our turbo. Um, so we'll go ahead and mock that up soon. Uh, these should be M10 by 1.5 threads. So I will go ahead and see if I can pick up some hardware. I was looking, uh, it's probably about 20 millimeters that we're gonna need for this. Um, you don't want anything too long because um, it'll obviously go through and could hit other stuff. And it's just kind of harder to get in at some points. So um, overall, looking good. Um, I did want to go ahead and heat wrap this in like a fiberglass wrap. Um, so I don't know when I'm going to do that. Um, 
So we will see, but uh, this is just kind of for mock-up purposes, just so that we can start getting the turbo and accessories all together. So I'm gonna go grab that turbo, see if I can find some bolts and uh, we'll stick this on. All right, guys, look at how cool this looks. We've got everything together now, it looks really sick. Uh, this is a Pulsar turbo. Um, I don't know if I've shown it before or not, uh, but it is a ball bearing turbo. Looks really cool. It's actually a little bit smaller than the HX35 that I took off of here um, because this is gonna spool up faster. It's gonna be able to hold the power that we still want. And of course, that's just gonna be better for us um, and our power goals. This is a 40 millimeter turbo smart wastegate. Um, this is a Comp 40, I believe is the, I don't know, series or whatever. Um, I got that one because it was specifically black on black and I don't kind of like the weird color combinations they put on some of the other ones. So this one looks really, really nice. Happy about it. This is also water cooled. Uh, the turbo is also water cooled. So I'll be piping those in here. And then of course we have our downpipe on and our integrated wastegate right there. Looks really, really cool. I'm super excited about all this uh, with the coils and the NGK uh, wires. It looks so, so sick. I can't wait to get these valve covers painted. Um, I think it's just gonna look so good. This engine's gonna be super clean um, and just super low key. You know, I'm not really going for anything super standout. So black, silver, it's just gonna be a really good color combination. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at this for a little bit longer and then we're gonna go ahead and start piping some of the wires or some of the coolant lines, uh, oil lines, and then eventually vacuum lines. Um, although we don't really have any of the fittings for that. This manifold does have, if I come over here, uh, a little port right here. So one of these will be fuel pressure. One of these will be probably blow off valve and or uh, wastegate. Um, so we'll figure it out. Uh, it'll look really cool. We can go ahead and tee off obviously if we need, um, but this is looking so good guys. I'm super happy. Um, so let's go ahead and get to all that wiring. All right guys, I've got a pretty good idea of how we wanna go ahead and route this out now. So we're gonna go ahead and just try it. Uh, we're gonna have to do, of course, a little bit of modification afterwards once we get it into the car. Um, but I think it's gonna be good for now. Um, we can go ahead and start using this red silicone line here. If you remember, um, one of them goes down here and then the other is like over there. And originally this is for like warming up the throttle body, I think, on a stock Z31. Um, but I've just had it circled off since I don't have that anymore. Um, but we can go ahead and use these for feeding and returning coolant. So one of them will come over and then I brought some brass T fittings right there um, and we'll split. It's gonna go into the turbo and into the wastegate and then they're both gonna come back out, T into another one for the return. So I think that's pretty simple, straightforward. Um, you can see right there that foil um, looking stuff. That's actually for making your own like conduit almost, um, heat resistant stuff. So. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that we don't accidentally melt any of these on our uh, exhaust. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and wrap the exhaust. I think I mentioned that already, um, but I'm pretty certain that I want to go ahead and do that now because we do have a lot of coolant and oil lines around here. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap both this and this with uh, like high temperature uh, fiberglass wrap. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get these. They're gonna bundle into one big uh, tube uh, with the heat shielding around it. Um, it's gonna end up over here. And then I got, I don't know if you guys can see these, they're banjo bolts. Um, I believe these are M8, but they could be M10. I can't remember what the specs for this turbo are, um, but they're banjo bolts and they go to a barbed hose, of course. And we're gonna have hose clamps on all these just to make sure. Um, there's not usually tons of pressure inside of a cooling system, but we'd rather not have those pop off. So uh, these are gonna go into the silicone lines, in and out, doesn't matter which way is which. Uh, same thing with these, uh, the TurboSmart uh, wastegate comes with its own little pipe fittings. Um, so these I believe are six millimeters and I believe these are eight millimeters. So that's what the T's adapt for as well. Um, but uh, they're gonna go ahead and go through those, come back out and then back into the other one here. Is in terms of oil, the, sorry, I keep jumping back and forth. Uh, oil comes out of this guy down here. Um, I do have a couple of fittings on it already. I believe this fitting is like an M8 ORB fitting um, into a dash 8AN. Um, and then I have this just blocked off right now. You can see it's normally uh, a dash four. So I think it goes, oh, it's probably dash six. So probably a dash six to a dash four fitting. Um, that's what I was running on the last one. Um, so I did buy some more dash four AN fittings. We got some 90 degrees here. Um, we're either gonna go 90 degrees up behind the engine mount, 
or in front 90 degrees in front of the engine mount. Um, I haven't figured that out yet. Either way, we're gonna wanna bring it up the front here and then eventually to this port. This is the uh, oil feed. Um, we're gonna make sure it doesn't touch this because uh, this is gonna get pretty hot. So we might end up putting some more of that heat wrap around this as well. Um, but yeah, so that's gonna go there. And then of course the turbo oil drain is gonna go out the bottom down into the oil pan, which I have very crudely left from the last one. Um, so I gotta go ahead and pull all that off. But it should be a pretty straightforward setup. Um, we should be able to get coolant and oil um, to everything that needs it. Um, and not breaking the bank. I think all of this setup really only costs, you know, like 75-ish dollars for all the fittings and lines. So not too bad. Um, as well as just being high quality stuff. Uh, we are using the PTFE and lines because we don't want to accidentally burst it or you know melt it. So that's the highest temperature A and line you can get. Um, and then of course we've got brass, which should be fine with all the temperature. So overall looking really good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start mocking up uh, where these lines come from and go to. Um, I've got probably enough of this to make it over again if I mess it up, um, but we do wanna kind of make sure that uh, when we route this, we're gonna have a place to secure it to and a place to make sure that it doesn't fall into any of these pieces here. So it's probably gonna go down around. I might make some brackets that come off of the valve cover um, as needed, um, just so that we can go ahead and zip tie it or something to there and then up over to these guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on that and we'll see how it turns out. All right, guys, over the past couple days, I've made some pretty big milestones here. Uh, so we got the timing covers back on. Uh, they are wrinkle. Um, the wrinkles are a bit smaller than uh, I think I was anticipating. I think I didn't put the coats thick enough. Uh, I put pretty thick coats on, like it said, um, and I think I just didn't do thick enough. Um, so if you do this, do thick, and then just keep putting more on, I guess. Uh, I will go ahead and do the valve covers at one point in the same uh, wrinkle. So I think... Um, I will try to redeem myself with the valve covers and try to make them a little bit thicker wrinkles, um, but at least it's gonna match uh, fairly decently between the two. Um, so I went ahead and got a lot of the lines done for the turbo. So up here we have the uh, oil and it just comes down here, down to the side of the block right there. I know it's not really in focus. Um, and then we got a lot of lines around here. So let me see if I can come over this way. Um, so we've got one of the coolant lines right here it goes down. I still haven't decided if I want to run this behind the flex pipe or in this little elbow right here. Um, I mean, I could also go like around here. Uh, it just kind of depends once it's in the car how much space we have. Um, so I'll figure that out eventually. Um, and then it comes down right here. Both of these lines split into T's. Um, you have two of them coming straight up here for the turbo coolant and then the other two going into the wastegate. Uh, the wastegate is in one side like up here and then out the other side. Um, so it's a little, got a little loop on this side here. Um, I did go ahead and zip tie these together just loosely for now. Uh, this is the vacuum port that I just have hanging here because uh, I don't have a long enough uh, hose for it. Uh, I forgot to get more of this six millimeter uh, quarter inch hose. So uh, that's something to get next, um, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. It's gonna go up to the intake manifold. We know where that's going. Um, and then for the oil drain, I haven't done it yet, but uh, I did get the fitting for it, uh, that guy right there. So we will go ahead and make that up and it's just gonna go straight over and into the pan. Shouldn't be any issue on that side. So um, overall it's looking really good. Um, I do have this pre-filter on cause I was like, oh, this looks cool um, to get a pre-filter to make sure that there's just like the minimum amount of stuff getting into the filter. Um, but it's actually for a full sized cone, as you can see, not a stubby cone like I have here. So we'll go ahead and work on that. Um, the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is take off the exhaust again and then wrap it in the heat wrap. Uh, just because we have so many of these coolant and oil lines going by here, um, I wanna go ahead and make sure they're protected. So um, that's gonna be the next job is pulling these off. I'm actually gonna spray them. Uh, let me go ahead and grab the paint real quick. All right, so I have this flame proof header paint from VHT um, and it is, you can see here, a ceramic coating, silica ceramic. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it with this um, so that we cover all of the stainless steel um, and then I'll go ahead and wrap it. Uh, really the only reason is one, because of heat um, and two, just because uh, when you wrap things and you get moisture in them, um, it can actually go ahead and corrode them. I know this is stainless steel, so I don't have you know too much of a worry about that, um, but just to go ahead and protect it doubly and you know this will go ahead and help keep a little bit more heat in there also as well um, so i think it's a double whammy 
uh, to go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and paint these and then wrap them as well. I do have a turbo blanket. Um, it's a little bit too big for this snail, um, but if I put it on, it looks like it's a really big turbo. So um, I don't know if that's uh, gonna go on or not, uh, but we'll figure that out. Um, it would just go ahead and help protect some of these lines as well. Um, but you know, that's it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that guys. Um, it's gonna take me a couple days, so I will go ahead and jump to that in the future. Um, and then I also think I figured out what I'm gonna do with the PCV. Let me go ahead and set this down. So I think on this side over here, I don't know if I showed you guys or not, I trimmed this, this PCV so it's a little stubbier. I'm gonna go ahead and just cap that off. I found some vinyl caps. Um, vinyl does really well in the heat. Um, and I'll go ahead and cut this one completely down um, and put to the new AN PCV there. Um, and then I'll go ahead and just cap off this one over here, um, since it's under this intake, I, you know, you're not gonna really see it all that much. And then I'll go ahead and put a new hole right here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut through the, um, the baffling underneath here. Uh, and then if I notice too much oil consumption, I will go ahead and put like a secondary baffle that clips on somewhere. Um, I'm sure I can make something that works, uh, but just because we're gonna need to move this regardless. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it out here and we'll just continue with the original plan put some new holes in it and then uh, just you know deal with the baffle underneath. So that's gonna be coming up soon. Um, I'm waiting for some bits for that, some of the, the step, step, built, step bits, excuse me. Um, and then we'll go ahead and start uh, getting those as well. Um, can't really do those until they're in the car, obviously, because we need to kind of route the lines to a catch can that's gonna be mounted in there. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start wrapping that. And it's gonna look so good, guys. I'm sure it's gonna look really, really cool. All right, guys, well, I realized this episode is getting a little long and I had to wait for some stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. Um, but next week, we are gonna go ahead and pull off that header. We're gonna paint it, we're gonna wrap it, we're gonna get back on the car. I'm not gonna do the downpipe quite yet because we do need to go ahead and get that integrated with the rest of the exhaust. Um, so that's gonna have to be down, down the line a little bit. Uh, but we're also gonna go ahead and wrap up the engine next week. It's, you know, there's a few things that we just need to finish up and it should be easy. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can paint to the scuff marks on the engine bay that I don't like uh, from the wiring harness scratching it up. Um, and then if, if possible, fingers crossed, you know, have all the right parts and everything. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get the engine in the Z next week, which will be really, really cool. Um, one of the things that we're looking for is uh, just quick mounts up with the new transmission, see where we have to mount the starter. Uh, hopefully all that lines up properly. And then also once we get that in the Z, um, getting the transmission in the Z so I can measure up the drive shaft length um, and start doing some other stuff like that. So fingers crossed that the next two episodes we get the engine back in the Z and get some really cool progress done um, because it's gonna take a few weeks probably after that to get all of the parts to really finish this off. So fingers crossed guys, I'll let you guys know of course what goes on in the next episode. And uh, I think that's it. So as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, drop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And then I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you guys next time.